All right, so I've been working to acquire recovery equipment for my power wagon camper. I recently upgraded the uh, winch line and also assembled a winch extension rope using some 7 16 inch M Steel Blue Dyneema. I'm going to be using that uh, same synthetic winch line to make a couple of uh, soft shackles today. Now soft shackles are lighter, stronger, and in my opinion they're safer than their heavy metal counterparts. And while I'm no expert in this field, I have been working with Dyneema rope for some time, and I've been studying the different elements that go into making a, a really good uh, soft shackle and also reviewing brake strength tests. So today I want to talk a little bit about what I've learned, and we'll go through the assembly instructions of making uh, one of these soft shackles using the design elements that I think are the best. Now I'm not recommending that you make your own soft shackle. If you don't make these properly, it could break prematurely, or the uh, knot here could crumple under load, causing the uh, noose to slip off during a recovery. Now it's probably a lot more advisable and more sensible just to buy one, but uh, you know, good quality soft shackles can be quite expensive. So if you are considering making one of these yourself, there are some design elements that you should keep in mind. Now from what I've seen in brake test, these soft shackles usually break and the contact area is under tension, which means uh, just below the knot here or in the noose itself. Those seem to be the primary weak areas. Now this is just a, a cheap imported uh, soft shackle that I bought for use with lightweight equipment, like my riding mower, and uh, it's built with a, a diamond knot. Now the diamond knot terminates at the top of the knot, and in this case they just uh, cut off the tails with a hot knife. Instead of feeding the uh, tails back through like other designs, to reinforce that weak spot. So in this case, you only have uh, two ropes here underneath the, uh, the knot. Now, uh, another issue that I see with this design, there's no locking stitch. So if you uh, open and close the noose here, you can see that uh, you have one piece of rope that's threaded inside of the other. And uh, if there's any sand or grit inside of there, you're gonna be chafing the rope from the inside. Now, the third issue I have with this uh, soft shackle is the material itself. This is definitely not legitimate Dyneema. So I have some uh, real quality concerns with uh, this cheap soft shackle, and I'd definitely not be using this for any kind of legitimate off-road recovery. Now this shackle, on the other hand, is made by a well-known U.S. manufacturer. Now they're using a plasma rope in this case, which is a high-quality alternative to uh, Dyneema. Now uh, the knot that they use, instead of terminating at the top, actually terminates at the bottom. So what, in other words, there are two tails after you make the knot, and those two tails get buried inside of these uh, two pieces of existing rope, so just under the knot, instead of having two pieces of rope, you actually have four sections of rope in that potential weak spot. So this almost completely eliminates the section just beneath the knot from uh, breaking under load. Now this uh, soft shackle also has a locking stitch. So that uh, issue that I mentioned before where what, one rope rubs inside the other one, that issue doesn't happen here. Because the, uh, the stitch is locked right here with a Brummel lock, you can open and close this noose all day and it's not going to rub inside here. So that eliminates another problem. Now the other design element that I like about this uh, soft shackle is the fact that uh, that locking stitch allows the uh, noose only to open so far. So it just opens just barely wide enough for the uh, knot to fit through. That's actually a good design in my opinion because it almost prevents the, uh, the noose from ever slipping off of the soft shackle. So I really like that aspect. Now there's really only one issue that I see with this soft shackle. That is, there's no external protection to prevent chafing. And in fact, I used this one time in the sand and the guy that I recovered accidentally ran over my rope and my soft shackle and it uh, chafed the soft shackle pretty good here on the outside. So there is an easy fix for that though. Uh, otherwise, this is a really good design. Now here's a uh, soft shackle that I built myself recently. As you can see, there are two sections of rope side by side in the uh, main portion instead of having uh, one rope buried inside the other. Now, as far as I know, there, there's no uh, strength advantage of one design over the other one. Uh, the one here is uh, easier to make and takes less time. On the other hand, this design I find is a, a bit easier to uh, fit through uh, smaller holes and uh, also just looks a little cleaner, a little nicer. Okay, so today I'll be assembling a soft shackle very similar to this design here. I'll have the uh, single piece in the center here where you have one rope buried inside the other. Uh, on this side, I'll be using a uh, locking Brummel stitch to prevent that chafing issue that I mentioned. And I'll be using a button knot which terminates on the bottom so that uh, I'll have tails buried similar to this design so that I'll have uh, four sections of rope here instead of just two to uh, help to reinforce this area. Now uh, there are other knots besides the uh, button knot which terminate in this way, but I'm familiar with the button knot. It's a very common knot and I have high confidence in its strength. 
Now I'll also be adding uh, some nylon sheathing to the outside to protect it from chafing and I'll be using a bit of a heat shrink tubing in this section which will hold the uh, nylon sheath in place and also prevent the uh, berry tails from poking out here. Okay so what I have here is uh, 8 feet of a 7 16 inch Dyneema rope. Now uh, this is going to make about a 2 foot long soft shackle and of course you can uh, make a 2 foot long soft shackle with uh, less rope. Uh, in fact I've done it with as, as little as about uh, six and a half feet but um, it's recommended to have a little extra. Uh, if you have a little bit longer rope it uh, makes things a bit easier. Okay so the first thing I'm going to do is just stretch this out and double it up to find the center of the rope like this so that um, the ends are together like that. And I'm going to lay it down and then on this end I'm going to shorten one of these ropes. So I'm going to shorten this rope by three inches relative to the other rope. Okay, so this rope here is going to be three inches shorter than this rope. And I'm going to go ahead and secure that with a rubber band. All right, so this, this end is going to be three inches shorter than this one. Now let's go back to the noose end. Again, you want to make this uh, pretty taut uh, so that you know you have the center here. I'm going to take a sharpie and I'm going to measure two inches down from the base or the very top of the noose. And I'm going to make a mark on this rope here, the closest one to me, which again is the short rope right here. I'm going to make a second mark with the sharpie, four inches from that first mark, but not on the same rope. I'm going to make it on the opposite rope. So this will be on the long rope. So we have the noose, we have two inches on the short rope, and then from that first mark, second mark is four inches on the opposite rope. Okay, so now I'm going to come down 13 and a half inches from the second mark. Okay, so 13 and a half inches. Okay, so again, two inches from the noose, and then four inches from the first mark, and then 13 and a half inches from the second mark. Okay, so now I can take this rubber band off. And don't forget which, which rope is which. This was the uh, long rope here, and this is the short rope. And uh, now I'm going to, I'm going to be feeding these ropes through one another. So I'm just going to make kind of a taper. And I'm just going to use some electrical tape. And then that's going to help me get this rope through the other one. Okay, I got a little taper on each uh, end there. And I'm going to take, uh, this is the short rope. I'm going to take the long rope. I'm going to take the long rope and I'm actually going to feed it through. Here's our first mark right here. So I'm taking the long rope. So again, the one that was away from me. And I'm going to thread it through where we put this first mark here. And to do that, I'm just going to push the rope together and then spread out the, uh, the threads here. Now this is a 12 strand rope, so you should have six strands on either side. You wanna make sure it goes right in the middle. And that little taper did help to get this larger rope through there. So I'm gonna just count the, uh, the strands. So I have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So I'm gonna pull that uh, long rope all the way through until I can see that second mark. So this, this here is the uh, second mark. Okay, so now keeping the, the rope flat on the table, I'm gonna take the opposite rope. So this was the short rope, this is the long rope. And I'm going to feed this rope into that second mark here. So again, I'm just gonna push together and uh, feed it through in the middle of the strands. Try not to split the strands, of course. So now I'm going to pull that, what was the long rope, all the way through. So that gives me something that looks like this. And what we just created there is called a uh, locking brummel stitch. Okay. So it should look uh, a little bit like a figure eight. Okay, 
So again, keeping the rope flat. Uh, the reason I'm keeping the rope flat is I don't want to uh, have the, the rope twisted. In other words, if you're feeding the rope through the top, it's going to have a weird twist in it. You don't want that. You want to keep it flat so that the rope's feeding ends into the side of the other rope. Okay, so now I need to bury this rope here, the one that comes out on this side. So to do that, I'm just going to use an ink pen. This is just a, a very cheap basic pen. Uh, it has a hollow end at the at this side of it. Um, I'm just using this as a as a uh, impromptu fid. If you have a fid, use a fid. It'll be easier. Uh, but this works too. So I'm just going to stick that little taper in there. And I'm going to use the tape to tape it up. Okay. So now I'm going to take the uh, new side of the rope and I'm going to skip two sets of strands. So if you see here, we have uh, these strands on this rope here. There's one set, one pair of strands. Here's the second pair of strands. I'm skipping those. Then I'm going to place the other rope in here, starting with the third set of strands. So I'm just going to take my pen and push it through there while I push this rope together. And it's really not that difficult. You just have to Try to make sure not to get the pen caught between the strands. And you just kind of feed it through, pushing the outside rope around that pen. And we're going to feed it through until we get to this uh, third mark here. out on the side of the rope there. And just pull it through. And I just want to make sure everything's nice and tight. Okay, so now I'm going to thread this rope here on this side. So this is the this is the rope that was buried inside of the other one. Okay. Now I'm going to take this rope and put it through this one. We're going to make another uh, locking stitch. So I'm just going to skip again, skip a couple of threads and we're going to open up one, two, we're going to open this one up here. And then this Guy here, this is the outside rope. It's going to just go right through the inside rope at the separation point here. Again, make sure I have it in the middle. And that gets fed through like this. Okay, so what we've done is we've made two locking Brummel stitches, one on either side of this uh, berry section. And basically what that does is it allows me, I can pull on these ropes, it's not going to affect anything here. When I open up this noose, it's also not going to pull the uh, inside rope out. So it's basically locked on both ends. Now if I pull the rope taut, at this point the ropes should be equal length, and you can see they are. Okay, so for the next step, we're going to be making the knot. So first I'm going to take the tape off of uh, the pen. Okay, so here's our shackle so far. We have the loop here, and the uh, locking stitch here, and then the buried section, then another locking stitch there. So I'm just going to turn the uh, shackle this way. And I'm going to hold, keep these two ropes in my hand. I'm going to hold on to those. And I'm going to take the, uh, the tail that's on the right-hand side here. I'm going to make a loop. It's going to look like a letter P, okay? And it's going to terminate in front. In other words, this tail loops around and terminates in front. And I'm going to do the same on the left side, but it's going to be a mirror image. So there's another letter P. And this one's going to terminate on the back side like this. Okay. So now I'm going to take the tail on the right. I'm going to feed it through the loop on the right from back to front. 
I'll take the tail on the left and it's going to fed, be fed through the loop on the left from front to back. Okay, that's a simple walnut. Now I'm going to make a crown knot and it's going to be a lot like uh, tying your shoe. So I'm going to take the right hand rope, just lay it on the table there, take the left hand rope, cross it over. I'm going to take this rope that's now on the left and loop it around the other rope and just tie it or pull it taut. Okay, so wall knot with the loops and then there's, here's the crown knot on the top here. Okay, now I'm going to push the uh, crown knot to the center. The reason being is that uh, this rope here, I want to make sure it's not interfering with the outside of the loop because we we're going to need to feed the, uh, the tails through this loop on the outside and this loop on the outside. So in order to prevent myself from feeding it in the wrong section, I'm just going to push this rope here toward the center. And I'm going to push this rope here toward the center as well. So that gives me some more room here to, to work with. Okay, now I'm going to make a second letter P in front of the first one. So it's just going to follow the contours of that first loop. Again, the one on the right is terminating in front. And I'm going to do the same thing on the left side, just following the contours of that original loop, letter P. And again, it terminates on the back side. Once again, we're just going to do the same thing that we did earlier. I'm going to take the left hand tail, feed it through the left hand loop on the outside. Again, making sure it doesn't go through here. It goes through the outside. So you have two loops. It's going to go through both of those. Same on the right. We're going to feed it through the outside of the loop, making sure it doesn't go through here. Okay, so that is our basic button knot. I just need to tighten it up a bit and then I'll bury the tails. Okay, so here's our crown knot. You should recognize that you have these two, two portions here, two loops that kind of cross over each other. And I'm just going to open that up and I'm going to feed my tails through there. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take the, the tail on the right, open up that knot, that crown knot, and I'm going to push it through the middle. And this one on the right is going to terminate on the back side of these two ropes here. Okay. So I'm just feeding it through my crown knot right in the middle. It goes all the way down and terminates on the back side of these two neck knots if you or sorry neck ropes if you will. I'm calling this section here below the the knot the neck because it looks kind of like a neck. And then this tail is just going to terminate on the back side of these two. Now I'm going to take that tail that I just uh, poked through there. That's this rope here. I'm just going to push it down a little bit. And that makes a little hole here, you see. Again, this is going to go through the crown knot. But I'm just uh, making sure that I have some room. So I'm going to take the tail on the left side. It's going to loop around this guy here. And it's going to poke through the hole I just made. And this one is going to terminate in the front, and so I'm going to have to coax it a little bit to make sure it goes in the right direction. There we go. Okay, so you can see here, here's the two neck portions. You have this tail terminating in front of them. Then on the back side you have this tail terminating behind those two. So your knot at this point should look something like this. Okay, so let me tighten it up a bit. It'll start to kind of take shape. Okay, so this is what we have so far. This is our soft shackle. This is the, the button on the end. 
Yeah, it should look something like this. Okay, now for the next step, we're going to tighten this uh, this knot. Now we're just going to hand tighten it for now. Uh, we'll still need to uh, mechanically tighten it later, uh, but this is just for the start. Now it's it's ultra critical that this knot gets super tight. So as you can see now, it's really soft. Uh, if I take my store-bought one here, this is rock hard. So we need to get this to the point of uh, this one here. Uh, and the reason being is, is if you try pulling with this knot now, or if it's not properly tightened, this knot's just basically going to collapse and the, uh, the noose will just slip right off of it. So, um, so really important. Also, the other thing that can happen is if it doesn't collapse, uh, there's going to be so much tension here during a pull that uh, creates a lot of heat and it creates uh, weak points and it'll, again, it'll break here. So again, really critical that, uh, that this knot gets properly tightened and uh, this is just the first step. So what I've noticed, you know, you can pull on these tails you know, or all four ropes down here, but these are directly attached to the center loops here. And if you do that, if, if that's the only way you tighten it, then what happens is the outside loops here uh, remain loose and you don't want that. You want the whole thing to be ultra tight. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from the outside uh, and then kind of work my way to the inside. And once you're on the inside, then you can pull one of the four of these to, to tighten it and it's pretty easy. But um, you always want to make sure those outside loops uh, get tight first. So I'm just going to start on the outside and um, start kind of pushing up on this on these ropes. It's kind of fine. You know, this one starts here, and I can as I push it, I can see this rope here getting pushed up. So I'm just going to follow it along, and now I can see it gets buried down here. Now it may not be obvious which of the four ropes. I need to pull, but um, through trial and error, you'll get the right one. And the other thing to keep in mind is you, you don't want the, the knot to kind of take on this shape. You want it to look sort of like a mushroom. Uh, so you can see like th this shape here, it's kind of mushroomed out a little bit. Um, that, that helps the, the noose to grab onto something, right? You don't want it to slip off, of course. Okay, so it's getting pretty tight to the point where it's difficult to do this with my hands. So I'm going to introduce a tool. I'm going to try to use this all here. Uh, you have to be really careful using uh, hand tools because uh, you don't want to, to rip the, the threads. So just use some caution. Okay, so that's about as tight as I can get it by hand and with the hand tools. Okay, so it's time to bury the tails. So these two tails here need to be buried inside of these two ropes, and that's going to help to fortify these uh, these two ropes here just under the knot. Now, um, if you notice, when you bury one rope inside the other, this is going to be the outside rope. This will be the inside rope. Uh, the outside rope is going to cinch up, essentially, and the length of this rope is going to be decreased. And what I found by trial and error is that... Um, the ratio of the outside rope to the inside rope length is about 1.4 to 1. Uh, what I mean by that is I measured this rope here, which is going to be the outside, and it's five and a quarter inches right now from the knot to here. Uh, five and a quarter inches divided by 1.4 is 3.75. So if I measure this guy, cut it to 3.75 inches, and then bury it inside here, it should terminate right about there. Now I'm going to give myself a little bit of margin, and so I'm going to cut this tail to uh, just less than 3.75 inches, maybe 3 and 5 eighths, and I'm going to bury it in here. I'm just going to put a piece of tape there. Uh, you should always put tape if you're going to cut, otherwise the, the strands go in every direction. Okay, so that's 3.75. I'm going to come out a little bit and cut it right about 3 and 5 eighths. Could use the razor knife for this, but this more knife has a nice thick handle. So now I'm go ahead and take off the end tape here. And I need to taper this. So I'm going to start at the end here. I'm going to pick two strands, the end strands, and I'm going to mark them. And then I'm going to skip the next two strands and then mark the next two. 
And I'll skip the next two and mark the next two. Okay, so we got six strands. So this is a 12 strand rope. We're going to cut out half of them essentially, but it's going to be tapered. So you're going to have 12 strands up here, two less, two less, two less. So you'll have six strands at the, at the end there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take these out and I'm going to try to cut them as close to the rope as I can. Looks a little bit of a mess, but it is now tapered. So I'm going to take my electrical tape again. I'm going to try to get the tape as tight as I can, just so it has a nice taper that, that will help it to uh, help it when I bury it. Basically, help to get get it through the buried section. Now I need to get this buried through here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my trusty pen. I'm going to take it to the end of this outside rope. The rope is going to be on the outside. And I'm just going to make a hole here and get my pin down in there and just kind of feed it up. And I'm going to come out as close to the knot as I can, like that. And I'm going to stick this guy in here and I'm going to tape it up. All right, now I just need to pull the pin through and uh, bury that tail. It's going to be a little tricky getting in here. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So go ahead and take the pin off. And now I can take the tape off. Okay, but it is nice and tapered. So now we're just going to pull it down. Okay, so that one's buried. And looking good. So that's what you want. Okay, so I'm just going to repeat for the other side. So same measurements. persuasion from the little screwdriver here. We uh, completely buried both the tails. They're looking good. I don't see anything poking through. So these are in pretty good shape. And overall, yeah, I think this uh, saw shackle is looking good. So there's only uh, a few more steps. The next thing we need to do is address the knot here. Of course, it's way too soft to use. Uh, it needs to, needs to be hardened up. So I'm going to show you how to do that next. Okay, so it's time to uh, use some mechanical advantage to finish uh, tighten up the button knot on the soft shackle. So the idea here is I'm going to tension up the winch when the uh, soft shackle is in, say, this position. And I'm going to tighten it and then relax, tighten it, relax three times, putting tension on it each time. And then I'm going to flip the uh, soft shackle around so that the noose is on the opposite side of the knot. And I'm going to repeat the process. So tension, relax, tension, relax three times. And then I'm going to turn the knot uh, 90 degrees and I'm going to repeat the process again and then I'll turn it around again the opposite way so 180 degrees again uh, and then tighten up this side so essentially when I'm done all four sides of the knot will have uh, been tensioned and that should pretty much equalize the tension all around the knot and uh, should work out pretty well uh, to get this uh, this hard so that um, it's ready to work Okay, so that uh, knot tightening process worked out pretty well. We got a nice hard knot, and I think this thing is ready for action. I'm just going to put uh, some finishing touches on it. Now what I like to do is I like to add heat shrink tubing to this section here just underneath the knot. And the reason for that is when we buried those tails, uh, sometimes you can see some of the, uh, the unraveled sections poking through the outside rope. And I actually even see that on the, uh, the one that I purchased. So uh, to prevent that from happening, I'm just going to put some heat shrink tubing here. Of course, it's purely optional. 
it doesn't really help to strengthen the rope or anything, but it makes it look a little better. So what I have here is some standard heat shrink tubing. It's a one inch tubing. It does not have the adhesive inside uh, because I want to be able to reverse this in the future if I, if I want to uh, take it off. I don't want to have to deal with a bunch of adhesive. So I'm just going to slide that on. This one inch fits perfectly on the 7 16 Dyneema. Now this Dyneema rope is temperature sensitive. So I, I want to be really cautious with getting it too hot so that uh, the rope doesn't get weakened. So I'm not going to use my heat gun on this or even a lighter. I'm just going to use a hair dryer and uh, it's going to add just enough heat to shrink the tubing without damaging the rope. Okay, so I got the heat shrink tubing shrunken down. It's in place now. It's not going anywhere. There's only one thing left to do for this soft shackle. I have some uh, nylon sheathing here. I've already cut this one to length and I went ahead and sealed the ends with a lighter just so it doesn't unravel on me. Now I'm just going to slip this on and I highly recommend this uh, nylon sheathing because I think it's cheap insurance. You know this Dyneema rope is not cheap. It's pretty expensive stuff and it's not particularly cut resistant. So I think the, uh, the nylon sheath should uh, help to protect it to some degree and it's not very expensive and it's not very difficult to get on. So I really think that uh, something like this is probably a good idea to uh, help protect your Dyneema rope. And that's just going to slip all the way up to the top there. And that's going to pretty well protect the entirety of the rope. And of course, if I ever need to get this through a, a smaller thimble and uh, it's not fitting with this uh, sheath on, I can just slide it right off. So that's it for this build. Uh, that was the last step. And uh, this guy is ready for action.